Many bars offer Casemaker as a member benefit. If your bar does this, you will need to first log in to your bar association's web page. Once you are logged in there, you can click the link to access Casemaker and will be placed here on Casemaker's homepage. If you are an individual subscriber, you can of course go directly to casemakerlegal.net and log in. Here on Casemaker's homepage, you can see the search area provided at the top of the screen. This is where you can conduct all of your searches in Casemaker using the search bar. Just above the search bar, you can see the Features toolbar, listing the various features and tools within Casemaker, which we'll go over a bit later. In the main section of the home page, you can see Casemaker's browsing area. This is where you can navigate through the various content that Casemaker provides. Observing the navigation bar, you can see the first option on the left is the My Account menu, which we'll go over in detail in a few moments. The Libraries menu is provided next, giving you the opportunity to review state, federal, and tribal court materials. You can also see the Compilations Library, where you can access the various shared collections Casemaker contains, as well as an Archive section. By simply hovering over the menus and submenus, they will open. Clicking any menu item will load the corresponding page. The State Library is your default landing page. Here you can see a listing of all 50 states, plus the District of Columbia and the Virgin Islands, and access those collections. Similarly, the Federal Materials menu and Tribal Courts menu provide you with a listing of the Federal Collections and Tribal Courts collections you can access through Casemaker. These menus are available by hovering over them on any page in Casemaker. Clicking on a menu item will then direct you to the corresponding page. You will notice the libraries listed along the left of the screen as well. From the State menu or Library page, we can go ahead and click on a particular state, such as Kentucky. Notice that clicking on a state then provides you with a listing of collections that state has to offer, and the currency or coverage for each collection type. Each state is going to offer you different levels of information and collections, at a minimum giving you access to case law, constitution, administrative code, court rules, statutes, and session laws. You'll notice that Casemaker defaults to the list view, as you can see in this blue navigation bar. This allows you to navigate through the particular items in an index or table of contents fashion. Choosing Tree View will allow you to navigate through the system in a more visual way, allowing you to expand and collapse the information that you're looking for, almost as if looking through a directory. This not only allows you to have a more visual frame of reference for where you are in the library, but it also allows you to explore the content in a particular statute, for example, and the information surrounding it. So by opening the 2019 statutes for Kentucky, I can then click into specific titles and chapters to see not only an individual statute that I'm looking for, but the information contained around it. Simply clicking on the statute will display its content in the more central area of the Casemaker screen. In the list view, if you click on a particular collection, such as statutes, it's going to open in an index or table of contents fashion. So if we scroll down and first click on statutes, of course, that's going to open the statutes to display the listing of titles that are available. By clicking on one of these titles, such as Title V Military Affairs, that's going to open up and provide the chapters that title contains. So we're now able to see this listing of chapters, and if we click on Chapter 36, Department of Military Affairs, for example, that's going to provide you with the listing of statutes that chapter holds as well. So while we're here, I'd like to actually point out our breadcrumb trail as well. So as you can see, we started on the home page and clicked on Kentucky and then statutes. We then navigated through Title V and are currently in Chapter 36. This is the way that Casemaker is able to show you where you are in the Casemaker system. And if at any time you need to return to a specific point, such as the statutes, you can simply give that area a click. Also, while you're in the statutes and list view, if you happen to have a section number that you already know that you'd like to jump immediately to, you can type that into the Go To section box and click the search button. However, while we're here in Chapter 36, we'll go ahead and click on a statute. 
Clicking on the individual statute will then provide you with the text of the statute itself. And in addition to this text, you'll also see this red line of information letting you know how up to date this particular statute is. If there is any new affecting legislation for the statute, you would be notified of that here and instructed to click on the Supercode tab to the left. But as you can see, this statute is completely up to date and Supercode is not available. On the left of the document is the listing of other document tabs as well. Here we have the Archive tab. Giving this a click will allow you the opportunity to review the statute as it stood in previous years. The Annotator tab is also provided and will give you the listing of any cases that have mentioned this statute. The Document tab will take you back to the document itself. There's also a dark gray document toolbar that you can see here across the top of the statute listing, just below the navigation bar. The first tool in this document toolbar is the font resize option. With just one click, you can change the size of the font on your screen significantly by enlarging it, and with a second click, we'll return it to standard. Next, we have the Jump To subsection menu. This really helps with navigating lengthier statutes. Additionally, there is a note menu that's provided. This allows you to add notes to any of the documents in the Casemaker system, and specifically the document that you're viewing. We'll get into the notes menu a bit further on in the presentation. The Browse TOC tab will take you back to the table of contents where the statute has been located. When you're ready to return to the home page, there are two ways that you can do so. You can locate and click on the home link here at the top in the features toolbar, or you can simply click on the Casemaker 4 logo in the top left corner. Now that we've covered the browsing system in Casemaker, let's go ahead and talk about searching. I know that this is the part of the system I utilize the most. The top portion of your screen contains everything you need to conduct your searches. This is our search bar. Here you can type in the information that you're looking for. Start with keywords, a citation or case name, section number, whatever your needs may be. When you click into the search bar to begin typing, you'll notice that a menu appears. Here you can click on search tips. I highly recommend checking out the search tips. As you can see, this provides you with a listing of the search operators that function in the Casemaker system. Here you can see an example of the various search types that are available, an example of what you would type in to utilize it, and a description of the results that would provide you with. A second click on the search tips menu will close that information. Also provided in the menu is a button for your recent searches and the advanced search, which we'll go over in a bit. Directly to the left of the bar that you can type in is our jurisdiction compilations menu. In blue text on the search bar, you will see what jurisdictions and compilations are currently selected. You'll notice that it probably says all states, all compilations, which is Casemaker's default setting. Clicking on the menu will allow you to select the individual state or states that you're conducting research in. You can also select your federal materials here. Your state and federal level searching can be conducted simultaneously. You can also select to search through the tribal courts as well. You may have noticed the related federal box. Checking this box will allow you to receive results from your selected state or states, as well as any federal material relevant to that jurisdiction specifically. Similarly, if you're conducting research through the circuit opinions, you'll also have the opportunity to use the related state box. This will allow you to conduct research through the circuit or circuits you've selected and provide you with additional information or cases from the related states. Over on the right side of the menu, you'll also see the listing of our compilations. Casemaker's default selection is all compilations, but if you're interested in only conducting a search within the admin code, for example, you can make that designation here. We'll go with all states and all compilations for today's presentation. Once you click the blue save button at the bottom of the menu, you'll be able to conduct your search. Before we do that, I'd like to discuss the other buttons you can see in this menu. The first is the Save to My Settings button. If the settings that you've selected are your most normally used settings when conducting research in the Casemaker system, then it would be beneficial for you to click this button so that those settings are saved. This way, they're established as your default instead of automatically using Casemaker's default. 
If you have previously conducted research outside of your norm and would like to revert to your default, you can click the Use My Settings button. If you've had multiple boxes checked and decide that you're going to completely change what you're doing, you have the opportunity to clear all of your checks with just one click as well. After making any of your selections in the Jurisdiction and Compilation menu, you'll need to be sure to click the blue Save button to save them and continue with your search. Now we are ready to start searching. Here we can type in our keywords or other search information. As you will notice while I'm typing, Casemaker is providing suggestions for what I may be looking for. The first few suggestions you see here are links to various documents, while the second set of suggestions relate to my commonly entered searches. When conducting research in Casemaker, I actually recommend that you start your searches off a little bit vague. Identify one or two items that are mandatory for any documents that are going to be helpful for you and start off by creating a foundation search with just those two items. So now I have typed in two keywords and I'll go ahead and click the search icon to perform the search. As the results are provided, you'll notice that there are 20 results per page. You're able to scroll through and read through those, but also by locating and clicking on this arrow through the search results field, you can proceed to the second page of results containing results 21 through 40 and further. There's also a double arrow button provided here. Clicking this will take you to the last page of the results, and you can also click directly into the page number field and type in a page number that you would like to go directly to. The left side of your screen provides you with a menu to further narrow your results. At the top you'll see the various compilations listed. Casemaker does default to displaying the case law information. But if you would like to review any of the other data types, you can simply choose statute, session laws, or any of the other compilations to view that information. You can further narrow your results by adding search criteria as well. You can choose a specific jurisdiction, court, or date range, as well as choose your data type, whether that's a published case type or unpublished case type. You'll also notice that you can click in the Search Within Results box for more options. Here you can type in more search operators or keywords, enter a citation or docket number, a full or partial case name, judge or attorney, or enter a specific date range. Now personally, I find that over 4,000 results is too many to try and get through, so I'm going to narrow this down by adding some more search items. All of the cases that we are reviewing right now contain both the term handguns and the term felony somewhere in the document. There are times, however, when you're conducting research with two terms and you'd like them to be found somewhat close together. You can indicate this in Casemaker by using a proximity search. I'll get that typed in and then explain how it works. Here I've typed in assault w forward slash 15 prior. Now that number is a number of your choosing, anything from 2 to 200, whatever your needs may be. What it tells Casemaker is to search for those two terms we've typed in within 15 words of one another. The order in which you type the, your terms does not affect the search. Casemaker will provide you with results that include assault, then prior, as well as prior, then assault. Casemaker does not include proximity searching for sentences and paragraphs. We only offer numbers for our proximity limitations. As a guideline, if you're conducting research within a particular sentence, I would recommend starting off at 10 or 15 words. If you're looking for terms in a particular paragraph, you might go anywhere from 35 to 60. Again, these numbers are numbers of your choosing, and you can change them as needed for your research. So I'm going to go ahead and click the magnifying icon to run this search. What's happening is Casemaker is now providing me with the documents that contain the word handguns as well as the word felony somewhere and also the words assault within 15 words of the word prior too. This search has brought us down to 199 results which is a significant decrease and is absolutely helpful for our research but I'd like to narrow this down even further. There are other times when you're conducting research in Casemaker and you'd like to search for a particular phrase, such as right of way. 
Now you could of course type that into the system and Casemaker will find the word right, the word of, and the word way. And while certainly they'll appear side by side at some point, there will also be many other times when they are several paragraphs apart as well. If your only interest is in receiving these items side by side, what you have to do is surround them with quotation marks. This tells Casemaker that they are a phrase and treats them as a single search item. I'm interested in finding the phrase minor child. So now I'm going to click the search within results box to add more search items. And I'm going to type in the phrase minor child surrounded by quotation marks to conduct that phrase search. However, upon further reflection, I'm actually thinking that perhaps the phrase minor child is a bit redundant. So instead of entering that search, I'm just going to type in the term minor. This is still going to narrow our results, but in a different way. All of the results that we're getting now are going to contain the term handguns, the term felony, the term minor, as well as the term assault within 15 words of the term prior. This is now providing us with only 52 cases, which is certainly more manageable. Let's go ahead and take a look at these results. By default, your results are sorted according to relevance. However, you can change that using the sort by option in the document toolbar. We also offer to sort by state, case date, number of times cited, and court level. The document toolbar also provides the opportunity to save the search, create a search alert, create or add to an existing document alert, print, email, save to folder, download, or add an item or items to the print queue. We'll go over these options in detail a bit later. The results themselves will provide you with some information, including the case name, citation, parallel citation where available, court, date decided, and the number of times it's been cited in the database along with a corresponding graph. Clicking on this graph will open the graph in a larger format. Here you can see there are several different colors available with corresponding colored lines for which courts the case was cited in. All jurisdictions, the same state of publication, federal, and other. As you can see, hovering over a particular jurisdiction type highlights that item on the graph, but further clicking on that jurisdiction type will highlight the item on the graph even more so. Hovering over the graph, you can see that there are dots that are provided, and hovering over those dots will tell you how many times the case was cited in that jurisdiction type in that particular year. Clicking on this dot will then provide you with a listing of clickable links to the cases from that year in that jurisdiction type as well. You can click Cancel to exit that portion, and the X to exit the larger graph. You may have also noticed the green thumbs up and red thumbs down icons throughout your results. This is part of Case Check Plus. Case Check Plus is a citator service letting you know whether or not the case is still good law. The green thumbs up indicates the case has not received any negative treatment by subsequent cases, while the red thumbs down indicates that it has. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the case by clicking on the large blue title portion to access it. Here we are able to view the case itself. We can see the document tab on the left of the screen is highlighted because we are currently viewing the case document. Now if we click on the Citing References tab, this tab will be highlighted. The Citing References tab will display the list of all cases that have cited this case. This is a standard part of the Casemaker database, and links to these cases are included and will take you directly to the portion where the case you are researching has been involved. You'll notice you also have the ability to conduct a search within these cases, as well as separate them by court and case type. The negative treatment tab is next, and refers to Case Check Plus, which we've already discussed briefly. This tab is available to you if you have access to Case Check Plus, and will provide you with the listing of cases that have negatively affected the case you are researching. The Cited Cases tab provides a quick listing of all cases the case you are researching has mentioned. Links to these cases are provided both through this tab and in the document page as they occur. You'll notice you also have that search within results box here. Upon returning to the document tab, you can see our document toolbar provides us with some useful links. We can click this first link to return to the listing of results from the search that we conducted. This first set of arrows will allow you to return to the previous result or next result from that listing as well. 
The second set of arrows you can see here will allow you to toggle back and forth between occurrences of your search terms. Each of the terms that you've searched for will be bolded, or in the case where it's already bolded, will be slightly highlighted. CaseMaker also links all publications in CaseMaker to the various documents that reference it. For example, you will notice links to other cases, statutes, or rules that are referenced in this case. In our document toolbar is also the page jump feature. This makes navigating a lengthy case, such as this one, so much easier. No more scrolling for what feels like days, just a couple of simple clicks, and you're right where you need it to be. Speaking of page numbers, CaseMaker incorporates parallel citations and corresponding pagination. If we return to the first page of the document, you'll notice that the first citation provided is in a different color from the secondary citation or additional citations. Throughout the document, those colors will correspond with the provided page numbers. The first citation will correspond with the page jump feature. Also provided near the page jump feature is our font resize option. With just one click, the size of the font on your screen significantly increases and with a second click will return to standard. The notes menu is last in our document toolbar section. You have the ability to add a note to any document you find within CaseMaker. This note is specific to your account and cannot be seen by any other accounts. And you can add as many notes to as many documents as you would like. To add a note, you'll click on the Notes menu drop-down box and choose Add Note. From here, you can simply type your note in. And then click Save. The note is then stored at the top of your document, but you can choose to use the Notes menu to hide or display those notes according to your own preferences. You can use the corresponding pencil icon to make changes to the note or the X to delete it. Of course, the document toolbar still provides the remaining document tools. Here you can add the document to your print queue or add this case and all other related cases to the print queue. You can click the graph icon to view the citing references graph. Using the alert icon, you can create a document alert. You can print, email, save to folder, or download the document. And you can also use the copy public link tool. Clicking the copy public link icon allows you to copy a publicly available link or link including a citation to the case you are viewing. This will then allow you to share the case with peers regardless of whether or not they have access to CaseMaker or are logged in. The public link will allow them to access the case and its contents, though they will not receive the full functionality of CaseMaker as a research tool. Speaking of copy, CaseMaker does allow you to highlight and copy text portions from various documents. So if you were to select and highlight a portion of text in this document and then right click that highlighted portion, you have the opportunity to copy the text, copy the text with citation, copy the text with a pin citation, as well as copy the text with a shareable link, just like we went over. This then allows you to paste the text you highlighted with the reference method of choice. Next, let's go ahead and click on print. Here you can choose the document format you are printing through. You can also choose if you would like to print cases in single or dual column layout, if you'd like to include term highlighting, the list of citing references, cited cases, or negative treatment, as well as attach your notes and a separate cover page. You have the same opportunities when you email, as well as when you download. Let's say your standard practice is to print cases that you need or download them to your work computer. You've gone home and after dinner you have time to do some research and you would like to review a case you found earlier in the day. Well, now you have to access CaseMaker again anyways because the case you printed is sitting on your desk at the office or is downloaded to your work computer. So instead of wasting the paper or the space on your hard drive, you can save the documents you need to a folder in your CaseMaker account, accessible from anywhere you can access the web. The first thing that you'll need to do is create a new folder. You can click the Save to Folder icon here in the document toolbar, and then fill out the appropriate new folder name field. Just click the plus sign to create that new folder. 
you'll get a notice that your folder has been added. You can then select the folder you'd like to use and click Save. You'll be notified that your document has been saved to that particular folder. When you are ready to view the contents of a folder, you can click the Folders link here at the top of the Features toolbar. As you can see once you've clicked the Folders button, on the left of your screen is a listing of all of your folders. Clicking on your folder will display its contents in the central area of the page. Once the folder is open, you have the opportunity to move, rename, or delete the folder if you'd like to. You can also use the corresponding checkboxes next to the items in your folder to then add that particular item to your print queue, print the item, download, email, or throw it away. You'll notice that the item in your folder does have a date stamp so you can recall when it was added. You also have access to a trash file for anything that you've thrown away but may need to recover. Any items that you remove or throw away from the trash file, however, are permanently deleted. Next to the Folders link in the Features toolbar is a link for your clients. We'll go ahead and give that a click. Here you can create and store a list of clients that you will be doing research for. Click Add next to the Client Name field, type in your client's name, and click Save. You can then select your client from the drop-down menu and choose Continue, or you can also choose to create and store matters that you're handling for your clients. Again, you'll click Add next to the Matter Number field, fill out a number or other identifier, and click Save. Once again, you can select that item from the drop-down menu and choose Continue. Making these selections and choosing Continue effectively logs you in as doing research for this client. You can be reminded of this by noticing the client link has changed to display the client's name. From this point forward, any research you do or documents you view are being labeled as research for this client. And I'll show you how this comes in handy a bit later. Since we are back at the home page now, let's go over a few other searches. This time, let's say you want to search for a statute. You have the statute number, so you could choose to browse to the statute by clicking on the state, then statutes, the title, the chapter, and then finally the section number to get to it. Sometimes there's also a subchapter that you have to click on as well. Or you could just type the section number into our search bar from the home page. We'll go ahead and type in our statute number. What you'll notice is that CaseMaker provides you with a few document options, and while one of these may be the document that we're looking for, I'm going to assume that it's not, and I'm going to then choose the Jurisdiction Compilations menu. And what I need to do now is select the state the statute comes from. This happens to be a Wyoming statute. I can then click the blue Save button, and then click Search to perform the search. And since we had all compilations selected, what we'll see first are the cases that come up mentioning this particular section number. We can then click on the statutes compilation and notice that the statute we're looking for comes right up. Alternately, when we've typed in our statute number and click on this jurisdiction compilation menu, we can be sure that we only check off the state that we're interested in as well as the corresponding compilation type. So for example, just statutes. We can then click save and run that search again to see the difference. Using this method, we only receive statutes. And of course, the statute we're looking for comes right up as well. You can search in a similar manner for a case you have the citation to. Whether from the home page or from any other page in CaseMaker, you can simply type your citation in. As you can see, I didn't use any spacing, punctuation, or capitalization, but CaseMaker will automatically correct that formatting for you. However, you do need to be sure you properly abbreviate your reporters. Because the citation is already state or reporter specific, we don't have to be too choosy with our jurisdiction or compilation menu. Do, however, be sure that if you're typing in a federal level citation, you have chosen the federal databases, whether that's all federal or the corresponding database. We have our jurisdiction selected and our citation typed in, so we'll just click search. 
and as you can see, the case will come right up. This particular citation does bring up two cases, and there's a very good reason for this. This other case does match our search criteria. Volume 256 of the Southwest Third Reporter, and the case does appear in part on page 72. So rest assured, if you're typing in a pin site, you will still be able to locate the case you're looking for. Now let's say we wanted to save this case to print later. Using the corresponding checkbox, we can then choose to click the Add to Print Queue icon that's provided here. You are then notified that the document was successfully added to the print queue, and you can click OK. You can access your print queue here in the Features toolbar. You'll notice that there's an icon hovering above the print queue letting you know how many items are inside. After clicking the print queue, the print queue page provides the list of documents that you've added. You can also directly add documents to your print queue using the locate search bar provided here on this screen. By typing in a citation, I could quickly add that case to my print queue. From here, I can choose to print all of my print queue, print just the items I have checked from my print queue, clear all of the checked cases, or check all of the cases in my print queue. The subsequent items will allow me to remove a particular checked document or clear the print queue entirely. I can also view my entire print history. Let's take another look around CaseMaker. And go ahead and check out the advanced search. By clicking into the search bar, the search menus appear, and we can click the advanced search button. Clicking this button will allow you to type in specific search information in a combination of your choosing, including keywords, citations for cases, attorney or judge names, panel, docket number, a starting and ending date range, court, including a starting or ending year as well, a short or long party name, as well as a code citation. Regarding short and long party name, the recommendation here is that if you know the specific abbreviated party name, to enter that into the short party. But if you are unsure of how the party names may have been abbreviated, typing in what you have for the party information should go into the long party box. Additionally, you can choose your jurisdiction and compilations here. For this example, let's go ahead and choose Colorado and click Save. From here, I'd like to type in Coats for my judge. And I'm going to locate cases from January 1st of, let's say, 2016 through today's date. I can then click the search button to conduct our search. As we can see here, we are provided with several results. We can then use the facets in the left-hand menu to narrow that even further if we would like. As I mentioned before, this is where our search tips would come in handy. If we click into the Search Within Results box, we're able to conduct additional research within the results we currently have. But let's take a look at those search tips again by clicking the search bar. We've covered AND searching as well as proximity and phrase searching, so let's go over the remaining search operators. By typing alimony or support, just as noted here, CaseMaker will then look for documents containing the word alimony or the word support. The NOT function has a similar structure. By typing in property, NOT, commercial, like so, the documents in your results will not contain the word commercial, but will contain the word property. By typing a tilde in front of a search word, this will allow the system to use synonyms in place of the keyword when searching, giving you broader results. This would be our thesaurus search. Using the asterisk in place of the end of a word, such as typing run and then an asterisk, this will allow you to bring up that word with any ending variation. So we would get run, runs, runner, running, etc. The asterisk acts as a general wildcard. You are able to place it in the beginning or ending of a word to account for spelling variation or various uses of that word. CaseMaker also allows for use of parentheses to group your searches and search functions. When creating such complex searches, if you run into trouble or need a few tips, we highly recommend contacting our customer support department. We have a live chat feature that's available here at the top in the features toolbar. And this really comes in handy when you're doing this type of searching because you can simply copy and paste any search suggestions we may have to offer. Yeah. 
The Recent Searches button from the search bar allows you to view the searches you've recently conducted. These include the terms you've typed in as well as the date and time they were entered. Clicking these terms will allow you to regenerate that search. Another feature you can use in CaseMaker is to save your searches. From a search results screen, you can go ahead and click on the magnifying glass icon you can see here, labeled Save Search. This gives you the opportunity to choose whether you would like this filed as the client you're conducting research for, and you can then click Save, and the search is saved. You can access your saved searches from the My Account menu by clicking on Saved Searches. As you can see, the searches are stored with the information that you had typed in to conduct them, as well as a date and timestamp, and the client matter information if you selected to include it. The settings link is also provided under the My Account menu, both through the navigation bar and through the left-hand side of the screen with your In My Accounts. Clicking on the Settings tab will allow you to access and then change CaseMaker's default settings in favor of your own preferences. Under the General Settings tab, you can choose how many results appear on the screen at a time, what page you land on when you first log in, if you want the system to default to include related federal materials when searching from a state page, as well as when using the Annotator and Citing References tabs. You can choose if your default browsing method is List View or Tree View, and if you would like the notes you type in to be visible on those documents. The Search Settings tab allows you to select your default search area and data type, number of results per page, and sort order. The Email and Print Settings tab provides an opportunity to enter an email address to be automatically populated when emailing documents. You can also choose your default document format for printing, emailing, and downloading, as well as the page layout and preference for printing the documents or a list of results. The Partner Settings tab allows you to choose which of our partners you can interact with. Make sure to save your settings in each of the tabs individually. The My Account menu also provides access to your profile. Here you can provide some basic personal information for your profile. This makes it easier for customer service representatives to locate your account in the event you need assistance. Under the My Profile system, you can also update your billing information. The Folders and Clients links, as well as Print Queue link, works in the same way the corresponding links in the Features toolbar function. The Notes link allows you to view and manage the notes you have added to various documents throughout CaseMaker. My Libra Books provides you with a listing of documents you've leased through Libra. The Mobile Application link appears in the My Accounts menu as well. CaseMaker does have a mobile application that you can download to your Android or Apple device. It is free to use and free to download. To use the application, you will need to register for it. Clicking the link under the My Account menu will pull up the registration form. Some basic registration information is needed, such as first and last name, email address, phone number, that kind of thing. Once you've registered, you will be provided with a reference code. After you have registered and received your reference code, each time you click the mobile application link, the reference code will be provided to you again. It is the same reference code. Once you have downloaded the app, you will be asked to provide the email address you registered with as well as the reference code you were given. This will link your mobile application to your CaseMaker account, storing your search history and allowing you to utilize your folders. The remaining links under the My Account menu correspond with our partners. Cosmolex is an accounting and practice management software that integrates with your CaseMaker account. Belex is an international law database which offers users access to legal information around the world. Memos, Briefs, and Discovery is a part of Legal Research Center, and it is a service that helps you manage your workload by doing research for you and writing memos, briefs, and more. U.S. Legal Forms partners with us to provide you access to legal forms from all 50 states. Libra has been mentioned a couple of times now. CaseMaker Libra provides you with an opportunity to rent publications. Libra is an online searchable library of treatises, practice guides, course books, desk books, continuing legal education information, and other secondary materials, all collected from professional associations and other sources, collectively referred to as publishers. These are linked directly to the CaseMaker 4 research system, giving you the opportunity to search primary law collections on CaseMaker 4, as well as access secondary materials relevant to your research. 
Case Digest is a summary service of cases that are currently coming out of the court system. These are usually published within about 72 hours of the case's publication. After clicking the Case Digest menu, over on the left-hand side you will see you can select your area of practice, court, judge, or jurisdiction to view those summaries from. The summaries are displayed in the central area of the screen and will provide you with the case name, area of practice, court, date decided, docket number, judge, and the date it was added to our system, in addition to the short summary itself. Just below the listed summary information is a link labeled More. Clicking this link will display the longer, full summary for that case. You may have also noticed the case name is a link that can be clicked on so that you can access the full text of the case in our system. You can see the buttons provided here at the top on the left menu for adding a digest filter or searching digest. Clicking the Add button will allow you to create a new email filter. These filters are able to be customized for your particular settings and specifications. The first thing you'll do is create a name for the filter and provide a description. You can then submit an email address or multiple email addresses that you would like to receive these summaries as emails. You can select your jurisdiction or jurisdictions, court, judge, category type if it applies, practice area, keyword searching, as well as distinguish between published and unpublished cases, or if you'd like to receive both. You can then select the frequency with which you receive your summaries, and whether your status for this filter should be active or inactive. You then have a few other email output options that you can select as well. Filters can contain single or multiple areas of practice, courts, judges, and other information, depending on your own preferences. Each filter that you generate will create its own email, so if you prefer a little bit more space and designation in the emails you receive, you can create multiple filters, with each filter containing an individual area of interest. The number of filters you've created and provided email addresses for dictates the number of emails that you will receive. If you prefer to receive just a single email, then you could put all of your areas of interest into a single filter. If you are going out of town or taking leave from your particular work, you do have the opportunity to inactivate your email subscription and filter. This is so that you are not coming back to two or three weeks worth of these emails. You simply input the date range under the schedule field and choose the inactive status option. Once you've made all of your selections for your digest filter, you'll just click save. Any digest filters that you've created will be stored at the top and you'll be able to activate or deactivate those, as well as edit them using the pencil and paper icons. Alongside Case Digest in the navigation bar is SiteCheck. SiteCheck is a brief analyzer service that allows you to upload a brief or other document containing citations. SiteCheck then runs that particular document through our CaseCheck Plus system, pulling out each of the citations and reviewing them individually to see if they are still good law. SiteCheck then provides you with a report letting you know of the status of each of the citations in your brief and gives you the opportunity to email that report to yourself or a peer. Simply click the Browse button to select a file and then Submit to submit the document. This will generate the report. I highly recommend reviewing the video for SiteCheck to see how it can benefit your practice. From the navigation bar we also have the Alerts tools. You've noticed the Add Alert tool in the Document Toolbar I've pointed out on both the search results pages and the document pages. This tool allows you to create alerts for not just cases, but statutes, rules, and more, and receive updates about them, as well as alerting you to new results on searches, without having to check on them regularly yourself. The Add Alerts tool will provide you with a notification if there is new information or an update for an alert since your last login. That will be provided here as a little notification badge. You can then use the alert toggles on the left if you have any alerts created, or use the Create Alert button to create an alert. After clicking the Create Alert button, you have the opportunity to choose if you are creating a search or document alert type, as well as provide the description and specifications for your alert. You can also choose to receive email notifications for updates from your alerts in addition to the CaseMaker notifications. Let's take a look at the rest of the links in our Features toolbar. We've covered Home, Clients, 
folders, and the print queue. If you've changed CaseMaker's default start page to your own preference, you'll also see a My Start Page link here, just before the home link that would take you to your start page. Just past the print queue, we can click on a link labeled History. This will provide you with a complete history of every search you've created and every document you've viewed since the very first time you logged in to the new CaseMaker 4 system. So if on Friday you found a statute you were looking for and after hours of searching forgot to save it to a folder, no big deal. Just use your history to find it again without the hassle. You'll notice that each item in the history is complete with a date and timestamp as well as a client label if you performed it while logged in to a client. Next to the history link is a link for our videos. Here you can view a tutorial overview touching on most of today's information, as well as other demonstration videos for the many features and tools that CaseMaker has available. Also available to you as a link in your features toolbar is the help link. Clicking this link will place you in the CaseMaker Learning Center. Here you're provided with a link to our user guide, an additional link for our videos, access to webinar registration both here and in the features toolbar, as well as a link to our weekly tips archive. The help page contains our contact us information as well. CaseMaker customer support is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. We provide our toll-free telephone number as well as our email address and a link to live chat with us both here and through the features toolbar. The features page provides you with a listing of the many features and tools that CaseMaker has to offer. Brief descriptions and more information for all of these are provided here on this page. As I mentioned, between the help link and live chat link is our webinar link. Here you can register for and attend as many webinars as you would like. We don't put a limit on them as we know and truly hope that you find our webinars helpful. And we've noticed that recurrent attendance does seem to boost the amount of information that's learned over time. Now, any time that you have logged into a web page, be it your Facebook or LinkedIn account, your bar association page or email, or maybe you logged in to pay your water bill, it is always a good idea to log out for your security purposes. CaseMaker provides you with a bit of an incentive for logging out. Upon clicking our Sign Out link, you will be logged out of the system and provided with a session summary. This is a listing of everything you did while logged in, complete with date and timestamps as well as client labels if you performed these items while logged into a client. We highly recommend that you print this page and keep it for your records because once you leave this screen the information cannot be retrieved. Of course the searches and documents and the actual history is still stored in your history, but the session summary itself would be lost. A little tip I like to suggest is that as soon as you log into CaseMaker, you then log in for your client. When you've completed your research for that client for the time being, go ahead and sign out. This way you can print an extra copy of your session summary to provide to your client or file away, and the date and timestamps can help you keep track of your billable hours. If you have integrated Cosmolex to your account, however, that particular process is already handled for you. Though signing out of the system remains a security step you should certainly take.